Welcome back to 5 Minute Knives, the channel that always prefers a good old fixed blade to any old folder. Today, we're going to talk about a knife I've had my eye on for some time, but didn't get my hands on until it was sent in by a customer for a custom Kydex sheath. Speaking of which, let's run an ad for these things. And we're back! Okay, hopefully you guys purchased one of these custom Kydex sheaths I make, and you did so by emailing me at dragonscalejoe at gmail.com and requesting a quote. It always helps to include a picture of the knife that you want a sheath made for. Tell me what colors you prefer, how you plan on carrying the thing, and I'll hit you back with a quote. Then you mail me the knife, I make a mold of your knife, possibly even a video for the channel, and I mail the whole thing back. And that's exactly what happened here with the Top Silent Hero. This was sent in by my friend Justin, a good customer. And shout out, buddy, and I'm going to put you on the spot here. One of those guys that included a pretty generous tip, which I greatly appreciated. So I wanted to do something really special for him. And he requested that this knife be worn on the right side, uh, high up, and he jokingly added this was his Christmas carry. Considering he gave me a tip and he was such a really nice guy, I wanted to do something special for him, and the longer I handled this knife, the more I started to think about, well, how would I carry this out in the woods? How would I carry this in a survival situation? And the way that this knife is set up, as far as the blade geometry being very blade heavy, and the balance point, and so on, I thought it would lend itself really well to small of the back scout carry. So I included an extra combat loop for him, and Justin, such a nice guy, he sent me PayPal money for that as well, which I quickly returned to him. This is a gift, buddy. I like you. I want to do something nice for you. I have a day job. Don't worry about me. Just continue to support the channel and I'm a happy camper. So anyway, this is still set up. This is ambidextrous. So he wanted the darker gray on the outside, which it is slightly darker. I know with the purple light, it's kind of tough to tell, but this is gray and darker gray. Um, you know, storm gray, this is called. And um, this would be your wolf or your sniper gray. So, and he wanted gray washers with it. So I think small of the back scout carry is the perfect way to carry this. And when I put this on in that position, remember, you're, Justin, you're gonna wanna use your thumb to push off the thumb ramp and then she draws out. Here's the blade, guys. And yes, this is essentially a sheath video. Don't get me wrong. I had somebody complaining in the comments, but he was from England, so I didn't pay it much mind. He said, is this a sheath channel or a knife channel? Well, guess what? It's a sheath channel that shows knives. How do you like that? Beastly knives in the case of the top silent hero. Right now, I'm seeing these things for sale uh, on Blade Ops, where I do all my shopping for $206.95, sub subject to change. And it comes with this leather sheath, which would work. I mean, it's okay, but look where they placed the strap right in the path of the blade. I can't stand it when manufacturers do this. It's not a terrible sheath. A little stiff in the loop. It's okay. It'll work for you. I mean, you can wear it. But then again, okay, so you're in an emergency. You go to draw this thing out. And look, it's just dragging across this strap. This is going to get cut in no time. Virtually impossible to draw it out without cutting that strap. And leaves all these really unattractive, fuzzy little bits of leather behind. Not my favorite, not Justin's favorite, and that's why he sent it in for a Kydex. Now, the Kydex is a little tricky too. And the reason being is we have sharp edges on this part of the handle here, as you can see. These high points. Not uncomfortable in the hand. You see they kind of um, complement the jimping. But when you go to sheath this, even in my Kydex, this can get stuck on the Kydex, you see? So, Justin, you have to be aware of that. This is one of the quirks of the blade. And now you get her in and she's locked in. I left it kind of tight retention. If you're wearing this in the small of the back, which is what I'm kind of talking you into, the last thing I want is for this thing to come out and you to get hurt. So I left it kind of stiff retention. You're going to use your thumb, pop her out, bam, and she's out. Any man who owns this blade, I assume, has decent to moderate grip strength. A beastly blade like this belongs in a beastly hand. Am I wrong? Now, one of the things that always kind of kept me from the silent hero was I thought that the blade uh, to handle ratio was a little off. You see how tall this is? It's a very wide blade. And when I see pictures of this thing online, it always made the handle look a little too spindly for me. I always thought the handle was a little too slight and the blade a little too fat. I'm very happy to report once I get this thing in hand, my opinion has changed. And what's the reason? Well, the reason is, is the handle's really not crazy, crazy thin at all. It's actually very ergonomic, has a really smart looking red liner, as tops is wont to do. And it feels like a nice chunk of steel in the hand. Um, it's not so much that the handle is too thin in this dimension. It's just that the blade is really, really wide. 
and it kind of threw me off in pictures. Now that I get it in hand, I see why Justin likes this knife so much. It's a beast. And I'm really honored that you sent it in and allowed me to make a video because I don't know if I would have bought this knife based on pictures and stuff. I think that's why, you know, knife tubers are kind of important. We let you know how a knife feels and that's a key component when you're buying a knife. I really love the texture pattern on the blade as well. This is so sharp looking. So, you know, if I'm looking on Blade Ops' site now, uh, this is too small for me to read, but overall length is 11.25 inches. The blade length is 6.36 inches, and this is a hunter's point blade style, according to Blade Ops. The steel is a 1095 high carbon, as is tradition. The blade finishes in a sniper gray, and the handle is in a black canvas micarta. They call this a Rocky Mountain Tread, this pattern. Looks pretty cool. Works really well for giving you grip. Very comfy. I don't have a problem with this. As a matter of fact, I think this knife would be really good with gloved hands as well. Now, in the winter, you're going to feel the coldness of this tang. You know, there's going to be a cold knife in the winter. But I think you'll be just fine. This is a beast of a blade. I really love the choil here. You have your lanyard hole here and here to connect. So you can have like a connected lanyard if that's your style, which isn't bad. It's actually good for those that like climb, do stuff with their hands. If you ever had to have your blade out, you can kind of let the lanyard rest on your knuckles and she ain't going anywhere. Uh, I really love the way that Tops does this choil. Plenty of room for my fingers. So I have medium large mitts, fits my hand nicely. The knife just has a nice feel to it. It commands a respect. Here's the blade, Tops logo there. Silent Hero, Anton Africa it says. 227710, whatever that means, the serial number. And there she is. I love the rounded uh, pommel here. Very, very nice. Now how it works in my sheath. Remember, you can get kind of hung up on the um, the height of the micarta scale. So you got to kind of get underneath that, push her in. She's locked in solid. Combat loops open like so and shut. You're going to use two of them on your belt. And remember, if this isn't uh, wide enough for your belt, you can just take these out, these spacers. So no big deal there. Buddy, if you ever get sick of this, you take these guys off. You take one off here, you put it on this side vertical, and you wear this on the right side with the darker gray. The only difference is, is you're going to have eyelets that are actually uh, set to face scout carry. And here they're just like a little more um, thin looking. Now, once the paint from these eyelets wears off, it's going to be a brass. So if you're really anal about it, you want to touch that up. I recommend a matte nail polish black nail polish will work just fine so nice looking sheath came out pretty good and i like this guy also the good thing about the double combat loops is she balances i don't know if you guys can see that but she'll sit really nicely on the shelf look very good you pick her up and you can take these and you open them up like so sorry take these you open them up like so put them on your belt snap them both into place and you're ready to rock and roll out in the woods here's something funky yeah she's out so very, very nice, nice setup, nice knife. Uh, I am really enamored with this blade. I think this is an absolute beast. I like it already. Uh, am I gonna buy it? I don't know. I mean, I have six inch fixed blades now, but I'm not opposed to it. I don't hate the idea of me purchasing this. I really love the way this finish was done. I mean, this will get screwed up if you use it a lot out there, but what a hunk of steel, what a beastly blade. This would certainly last you, easy to sharpen, uh, comes with a nice edge, tall blade, for sure, would make a fairly decent chopper in my guesstimation for a six inch knife. Good for tater digging, big time. This thing going in, twist this sucker. I mean, that's a bad day for any tater. So in my opinion, the top silent hero, you know, coming in at about $200, that's a total buy. I mean, the weight is 12 ounces. You know, it's not too, too bad. So manufactured in the USA, what else do you guys need? I say it's a buy just from handling it, but I really wanted to show off my sheath. And again, if you guys want a sheath, email me at dragonscalejoe at gmail.com. Justin, thank you so much for the business, bud. I really appreciate you. And thank you for the tip, man. Really means a lot. I mean, I don't know. I get a little emotional when I get a tip. It's always sweet. So I always want to go above and beyond. That's why I included the extra combat loop. You don't need it. Switch it to the other side. Use this on another knife. Good to go, buddy. Furthermore, if you need another sheath in the future, guess who's getting a discount? You, my man. And... Everybody that's on our Subscribestar gets 15% off sheaths anyway. So if you need a sheath made, guys, go sign up on Subscribestar. It's a buck. It's not going to kill you, right? Anyway, enough yapping from me. Guys, let me know what you think of the Top Silent Hero. If you own it, how's it been holding up? What do you use it for? What's your primary intended use for this sucker? I say tater digging first, but I think this knife would be capable of doing just about anything else. High flat grind. I mean, this thing's a freaking beast. So that's my two cents. I really love the jimping on the spine here. You got like a kind of higher raise point here to let you know, but you can always go over, especially if you were using the finger choil. This kind of lines up nicely for your close work and uh, for your tater digging. I mean, taters beware. This is brutal.
So that's my opinion. Just wanted to shout out Justin, show off the sheets, say hi to you guys. Hope you're having good holidays. Hope everything's okay in your world. Sound off in the comments. Let me know how you're doing, how you're feeling, and what knives are turning you on lately. But more importantly, what do you think of this bad Larry Appleton? So that's it for me. I'm out of here, and I'll see you guys next time on 5-Minute Knives.